Hello guys, welcome to DTW Tutorials, welcome. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be solving 25 GED math practice test. That's the part 2, okay, the part without calculator. Okay, I've already solved the part 1, also which is 25. You know, your GED, in the GED um, test, you have 50 questions. You have a part with, that allows the calculator and the part without the calculator, okay? I have already solved the part, um, the 25th first of the part with um uh, calculator and now this is the part without the calculator which is quite intense so if you've not watched that part one i'll drop the link in the video description box of this video for you to go check um and also watch it's going to help you okay watch the full video it's going to help you if um you're about taking the exams you're preparing for the exam or you don't know what the, the test looks like okay if you watch go through this video it will give you an idea of what the questions are okay and um you know definitely the questions cut across each of the topics of the GED um, um, uh, uh, test that's from your uh, stats to your probability your word problems algebra it cuts across all those questions under the maths um, curriculum that's the math study guide okay so uh, please try to go watch part one all right and if it's your first time on the DTW math plus channel please try to click the subscribe button okay we're a fairly new um, YouTube channel and I would love your support okay please show me some love and support and please click the subscribe button to support me and um, let me know you want much more of what uh of, of what we are doing okay my first uh, plan and vision of this channel is to you know um you know um, introduce all the topic under the ged study guide and solve examples on them but i noticed i've started with division multiplication and i noticed that people weren't watching that much maybe some people would have um, read through that so i decided to do this to cut across you know it's, it's for everyone, okay, for those that haven't done the test at all, as that have, you haven't started reading, and for those who have read to a particular point that they are ready for the exam, so this is going to help you because it cuts across the GED study guide, all right? Okay, so, and uh, definitely during the course of the year, we'll continue, continuously upload videos to help you pass your GED math test, and I will also advise um, that you get a test book, which is, you can get the Kaplan, all right, Kaplan textbook, okay? And um, uh, please, I also um, appreciate if you support us through our Amazon affiliate link to get your Kaplan textbook. And why do you need a textbook? Because you actually need to solve. Apart from watching videos, you need to put your pen down on paper and solve that math. All right, because what this does, you solving yourself and getting the question, understanding it more, it builds your confidence. It kills every tension you have for maths. All right, you know when you, you know when you keep on practicing, practicing, and you see you're getting the questions, your confidence gets, you know, gets boosted more and more, and you'll be definitely ready for that GED test. Okay, so please, you can try get your Kaplan test book through this link, and also you can get um, the Texas, the calculator you're going to be using for the exam. Also. So I'm going to drop the, the Amazon affiliate link and the video description box, okay, below. And uh, please try to support us through those um, affiliate links, all right? I would appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and also notification bell to get instantly notified whenever we upload more videos for you. Definitely, I will upload more practice tests being solved. And also, we have a Facebook group where you can come on, come on the, on the group and post your questions, you know, take a a picture of the question you're having difficulty in and definitely i'll respond to you by solving it or even making a video for you all right and on the dtw math plus channel you see some videos i've solved for um, um students preparing for the ged math practice test on the group so you can also join the, the facebook group and I'm, i'll leave the link of the group in the video description box below all right okay before we get on to solving the questions i just want to let you know that jesus christ is coming soon give your life to christ for jesus is the way he is the truth and is the life as i've said in the first video he's the one who will give you that peace that you need the joy he's the one who will give you that secured future and also he's the one that will also give you eternal life for my brothers and sisters there's life after death and i all oh, what i want and what my heart desire is that we shall meet in heaven at last in jesus name all right so as we get on to the video now just remember that you are destined to win in your forthcoming exams and in every endeavor of your life all right so let's get on to solving this math question now 
Question 1 of the GED Math Practice Test, Part 2. This is the part where calculator is not permitted. Okay, it says, Jeanette wants to enclose her ranch in a fence. Unfortunately, it is irregularly shaped. Using the diagram of the farm below, find how much fencing she needs. Okay, so finding out how much fencing she needs is just to find the perimeter of this what shape. Okay, and you can see as the question has said, this shape is what irregular. We have a rectangle here, we have a semicircle here. We've been told the radius of the semicircle as was 500 yards. Okay, and remember what is the uh, the formula to find the perimeter of a circle or this uh, the circumference of a circle is what pi d okay and to get your uh, semicircle which is half of the circle all we need to do is just say pi d divided by 2 so this is the formula to find the perimeter of a circle okay and d what will be our d our d is what the diameter and here we've been given what a radius right which is what 500 so d so d is what d is what 2 times what r that's your radius so we have here our d will be what 2 times what 500 all right and which will give us what 1 1000 watt yard all right so this is our diameter of what the semicircle here okay so um let us let us so let us add up all the perimeters this the sides now all right so first of all let us add up the perimeter of what this uh our semicircle so it is going to be what pi d which we've gotten as what 1000 that is um times 1000 divided by two okay now we have a side here you know perimeter is just adding the sides okay the value of the site now we have from here to here we have from here to here and we've been told that from here to here which is what the diameter okay is what 1000 is that not it okay so from here to here is what 1000 that's from here to here okay follow me closely okay is what 1000 yards all right that's our diameter so we have this side left here we have this side left here and from this side we know that the total side from here to here is what 2500 what yards so it means this remaining side will be what 2500 minus what 1000 yard all right i didn't put the yard but remember we are all working in what yard here all right so 2500 minus 1000 what would that give us that would give us what 1500 what yard all right so it means the summation of this side and this side is what 1000 what 500 so we add this up here we add this here 1500 so we've added up all the sides all the sides here now now let us add up this next side this next side is what 1500 yard okay is the same as this all right so we had plus 1500 then this next side is what 2500 plus 2500 then finally this side is what we just add up here plus 1500 yards okay everything in what yards all right but if you see our answers here our options here there's nothing like yards so we can just discard yards all right okay so let's uh, simplify this two would, would go in 1000 how many times that would be 500 so we're left here with what 500 pi okay plus what is one five plus one five that'll give us what uh three thousand that's one thousand five hundred plus one thousand five hundred will give us three thousand then three thousand plus two thousand five hundred what would that give us that will give us zero zero five then five then let's add this final one thousand five hundred what would that give us we're adding we have zero zero Five plus five will give us a ten, so we have a zero carry a one. One plus five will give us a six, and six plus one will give us a what seven. So we are left here with what seven thousand. All right. So this is our final answer for this question to find the perimeter of this this what irregular shape. So this is the amount of fencing Janet is going to what need. And here our right option here is what option three all right so this is our right option question two of the ged math practice test that's the part two the part without calculator it says there is one milliliter in a cubic centimeter okay then there is hundred centimeter in a meter 
how many milliliter are in a cubic meter okay let us take this let's break this down this conversion unit conversion you have to be careful here so we, let's break this down okay together okay so it says there are what one milliliter in a what in one cubic centimeter okay and there's 100 centimeter in a meter that's 100 centimeter in a watt meter that's what this means it means what one meter is what 100 centimeter okay all right how many milliliter are in a cubic meter okay so we need to uh you know we need to find we need to convert cubic centimeter to what cubic meter we need to know how many you know cubic centimeter are in a cubic meter okay and we know from our statement that what one meter is equal to what is equal to what is equal to what hundred what centimeter so one cubic meter will be equal to what 100 centimeter or what cube i hope you know that okay from your conversion all right so one cubic meter since one meter is what 100 what centimeter then cubic meter which is what three raised to power three all right that's and it's cubic meter cubic when you say cubic is what m cube raised to power what three anything raised to power three all right okay so one cubic meter it will be equal to what hundred what centimeter raised to power three and what would that give us one cubic meter will be what this hundred this is like hundred times hundred times hundred and this will give us what that will give this will give us i think four million we have zero one zero zero that's how many zeros four zero plus another zero okay yeah one million okay so we have one million was cubic centimeter okay so one cubic meter is what one million cubic centimeter okay so here we have one cubic meter equal to what one million cubic centimeter so from our question we know that what a uh, one millimeter is equal to what one cubic centimeter is that not it one millimeter is equal to one cubic what centimeter all right and the question asks us what how many milliliters are in what one cubic what meter and we know from our, our, our conversion here that one cubic meter is equal to what one million what cubic centimeter is that not it so our ml the millimeter in a cubic centimeter will be what one million all right so we have what one million all right one million or cubic or centimeter since from here our question it says one milliliter is in what one cubic or centimeter so definitely how many millimeter will be in a cubic uh, centimeter will definitely be what one million it's just multiplication all right so since this is one and this is one so it means it to be the same thing so we have one million what one million milliliter will be the same as what one million what cubic centi meter okay so it's going to be the same since this is one one milli, milli uh one milliliter is equal to what one cubic centimeter and we know that one cubic centimeter uh, and we know that one cubic meter here because our question asks us how many milliliter are in a cubic centimeter and we know that one cubic centimeter is what one million cubic what centimeter so from here the millimeters in a cubic meter would definitely be what one million what one million watt liter okay so this is our answer our answer is what one million watt liter and our right option here is option one question three of the ged math practice test part two that's um the the part without um calculator okay it says an investor wants to invest some money he will put half of his money in stocks the other half he wants to split equally between mutual funds, bonds, and trust. How much of his money will go into stocks? Okay, so how much of his money will go into stocks? Okay, this question is just simply for you to understand it. It's quite an easy one. 
Now, the investor wants to invest some of his money. He will put half of his money in stock. So whatever amount, even if it's one, uh, one billion dollars, half of one billion dollars, that's what he's going to put in stock. While the other half, he will split equally between mutual funds, bonds, and trusts. So the question simply asks, uh, how much of his money will go into stocks? So definitely it is what half of his money that would go into stock because that's this is what the question stated here he will put half of his money in stock so half is the correct answer here and our right option here is option two question four of the ged man practice test part two that's the part without calculator it says a one ratio four scale model means that each side of the model is four times smaller than the original okay each side of the model is what four times was smaller than the original for the item below what is the ratio of the volume of the one ratio four scale model of the figure with the actual figure so what is the ratio of the volume okay of the four ratios for one ratio four scale model of the figure with the actual figure okay it, it's just simply the cubes of what the original what ratio which is what one ratio four okay that's the um original ratio so what is the cube of this you know we're looking at the the volume okay so it, it's asking us what is the volume what is the ratio of the volume of the one ratio four scale model of the figure with the actual figure so it's just one uh, one cube ratio 4 cube and what is that 1 cube will still be 1 and what is 4 cube which will give us what 64 4 times 4 is 16 times another 4 will give us what 64 so this is our answer and our right option here is option 5 question 5 of the GED math practice test part 2 that's the part without calculator okay it says you have this is a value here you have 213 plus 441 okay all into the bracket divided by 112 is equivalent to which of the following okay so you have 213 plus 441 bracket all divided into what 112 and this is liken as what 213 plus 441 all divided by what 112 Two. All right. So what what this is the what this actually this what what will happen here is just the distributive law. Okay. Where this is also liking as what? Okay. This is also the same as two one three divided by one one two plus four four one divided by one one two. Okay. So this is the same thing. So from here you can further simplify by saying what we have two one three divided by 112 or into brackets plus 441 divided by 112 okay so if you solve this you are going to get the same answer also when you solve also the, the, the question okay so if you solve this you're going to also get the same answer as our question so this is our answer all right that's some um, distributive what law all right and where's our right option here our right option is option four this question six of the ged math practice test part two okay that's the part without calculator it says for the sake of this problem Assume a 52-speed CD drive can copy a 4-minute song in about 0.7 seconds if it copies at maximum speed. Now in bracket it says, unfortunately, this never happens in real life. Okay, full stop. Now it says further, assuming that the CD drive copies at maximum speed, okay, how quickly can it copy a 10-song CD? if each song is four minutes long okay now in reading this question okay the question uh, actually try is trying to confuse um it's trying to put a little confusion in um in any exam any person taking the test okay now it says uh, you can see in this bracket it says unfortunately this never happens in real life okay so this can actually confuse someone when you read for that it now says as you mean that the cd drive copies at maximum speed so it means you are not even to consider this unfortunately this never happens in real life because it further says assuming it's what it copies at maximum speed 
So, assuming that it is not what real life. Are you getting it? So this particular uh, parent, this um, words in parent, this statement in parentheses might actually confuse you. But see, look, you know, in answering um word problems, just um follow what the, the the question says. Okay. So it says even if there was a twist somewhere, what the main question says is what you would follow. Now the main question is from this particular point, assuming that the cd drive copies at maximum speed so we are definitely going to use this word speed that is what 52 speed cd drive okay that's 52 speed all right and we're also going to use this um time and uh, a four minute song would use even if it says in bracket unfortunately this never happens in real life you you might just say this is not possible it, it, it there's no answer for this or it's incomplete no but the question says assuming now that it is not what real life that's what the statement says assuming that the cd drive copies at a at maximum speed so it is not what real life so we're going to follow this word speed all right so the question now says for that how quickly can it copy a 10 song cd if each song is worth four minutes long okay so a 10 song cd with each as what four minutes okay and we've been told here that for this, the 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 52 speed CD drive can copy what a four minute song in how many seconds in what in 0.7 word seconds okay and here we our question says how many um what will be the time how many minutes will it take for 10 song 10 song which each song is what four minutes so all we need to do is just say 10 times what 0.7 seconds and that will give us how many minutes it's going to use in copying what 10 songs so what is 0.7 times 10 0.7 times 10 will give us what will give us what seven seconds seven seconds okay so this is the time it's going to use in copying what 10 song which is what four minutes long okay because we've been told that the 52 speed drive can copy a four minute song in about what 0.7 seconds so all we need to do is just multiply 0.7 by what 10 to give us what the time it will use to copy what 10 song on that 52 speed cd drive all right so our answer is what seven seconds and in the question also says answer this question in the standard grid on your answer sheet so um so we write here seven okay i hope we re remember how to answer questions on our standard grid all right so we just write here seven and here we'll go and shade seven down here so this is how you answer on your standard grid all right you shade seven down here since seven is our answer we shade seven down here all right question seven of the ged math practice test part two that's the part without calculator it says to the nearest ten percent if this person spent a total of we're considering this pie chart here okay this circle graph it said if this person spent a total of four thousand four hundred dollars this month how much did he spend on food okay so we have food here it says to the nearest 10 percent this is greater than 10 percent so we can't approximate so we're still going to leave it as what 21 what percent okay so if he spent a total of four thousand four hundred dollars this month how much did he spend on food so we're considering what food so to know the amount he spent on food is just simply 21 percent of what of four thousand four hundred dollars that's for us to know the amount he spent on food so to do this what do we have we have 21 divided by 100 times four four zero zero okay where this would cancel out you know what well, this is a, the part without calculator so uh let's let's solve this together let's multiply this together so we have 21 times what 44 okay so what is four times one four times one is what four four times two will give us what eight four times one will give us what four and four times two will give us what eight okay so let us add this up we have uh four and eight plus four will give us twelve so we 
put down 12 for carry a 1 and 1 plus 8 here will give us what 9 so this is our answer and um, if you also um, are confused about multiplication um, there's a video on this channel that's DTW Math Plus I think I have yes I have I have done uh, a video on multiplication okay explaining how multiplication is done so you can watch that video if you're confused about how to do multiplication it's going to help you okay all right, so the uh, answer is what uh, nine hundred and one twenty-four dollars, and our right option here is option five. Okay, so this is our answer. Question eight of the GED Math Practice Test Part Two. That's the part without calculator. Okay, and we're still on this graph here. That's a circle graph here. It says to the nearest hole, how many times more money does this person spend on gas than on utilities? Okay, how many times more money does this person spend on gas than on utilities okay so he spends on gas how many percent of his money 11 percent and on utilities what six percent so how much more on gas does he spend on utility is it simply what just divide 11 by what six okay so in dividing 11 by six let's do this together we have what 11 will go um six um 6 in 11 will go how many times? Just one times because, you know, this is lower than 12, okay? So if it was 12, it will just go simply go two times, but it will just go one time. And one times 6 here will give us what? 6, okay? So let's subtract this. Uh, 1, can we subtract 6 from 1? No, we have to borrow a 1 here. And we have 11 minus 6, what would that give us? That would give us what? 5, okay? All right? Can 6 go in 5? No, it cannot. So you put a dot here and add what is 0 down here. All right. And 6 in 50, how many times can it go? You can, there's 48 here. And um, um, so 6 can go in 50, how many times? 8 times. Because, you know, 8 times 6 will give us what? 48. So we have here 8. Okay. So at 8 times what? times 46 will give us what 48 so let's subtract this can we subtract this no so uh, can um, can we subtract 8 from 0 no so we have to borrow a 1 so here we have 10 10 minus 8 will give us what a 20 can 6 go in, in 2 no we have to add a 0 and 6 in 20 will go how many times to go 3 times okay because 3 times what 6 will give us what 18 so it can only go three times. All right. So let's stop here. So our answer here is what? 1.83. All right. But the question says to the nearest hole. Okay. So to the nearest hole, it means we need to what? Approximate. Okay. And here we have eight. So we can carry, since eight is greater than five, we can carry one to this what? One here to add up. And we have one plus one will give us what? Two. So our answer is what? Two. Okay. So our answer is what two. So approximating to the nearest hole, we get what two. And what is our right option here? Our right option is option three. Question nine of the GED Math Practice Test Part Two. That's the part without calculator. We're still on this graph here, the circle graph. It says to the nearest ten percent, if the gas bill was three hundred dollars, how much was his monthly spending? Okay. So if the gas bill now it says what to the nearest what ten percent. Okay. So we can approximate now since this is eleven, we can approximate this um, percent to what ten. Okay. So since one is what um. 1 is not greater than 5 and we can't carry to this particular value here. So we approximate this to what? 10% because the question says to the nearest what? 10%. Okay. So we have this now as the gas as what? 10%. So it further says if the gas bill was $300, how much was his monthly spending? Okay. I remember in quest from question 7 when we were given, I think we were given $4,400 as, as its total amount and we were asked what was the amount of food given the percent as 21 percent what did we do we did what 21 percent of what the total amount okay is that not what we did which gave us the food what food amount okay this was the formula we use now for this <clears throat> now for this it says we are now given the gas amount okay that's why given gas amount g amount as what 300 what dollars okay so now we're told to find 
it said how much was his monthly was spending so we are told to find the monthly spending so the monthly spending for us here is what unknown and we have our what 10 percent okay we have our percent of what the percentage of what of gas okay so all we need to do is find what our monthly was spending since we know our gas amount as what well, 300 dollars okay so from here what do we have we have what 10 10% will be 10 over what 100 times our known, which which we let us just put as what the total amount that is total monthly spending. Let's put it as what TA is equal to the gas amount which we, we've been given as what 300 what dollars. Okay, so here we have to make TA the subject of what the formula. Okay, so in making T the subject of formula, what do we do? First of all, we do what we cross multiply. We take this 100 down here. So we have what 10 times ta is equal to what 300 times what 100 all right and the final thing to do to make ta the subject of formula we divide both sides by what 10 okay well sorry 10 where 10 will cancel out here so we're left with what ta is equal to what 300 times 100 over 10 where this 10 this one zero here will cancel out this one zero so we're left with what 300 times 10 and what is 300 times 10 and that will give us what three thousand dollars okay so this is our answer that's the monthly spending if his gas bill was what three hundred dollars so this is our answer and our right option here is option two okay so this is our answer question 10 of the ged math practice test part two that's uh, the part without calculator. It says twice a number plus two is equal to three times the number minus two. Which of the following equations can be used to properly solve for the number? Okay, from our question, let's interpret it. It says twice a number plus two. So let's say the number is, from our option, um, the number is given as n. So let's say the number is, um, let's say, the number is n okay so twice a number is what two times n okay since we don't know the number the number is un unknown so twice the number is two times n and it says twice a number plus two so plus two is equal to that's equal to three times the number minus eight that is three times the number which is n then minus eight okay so let's simplify this two times n is what two n plus two equal to what is three times n that will give us what three n then we'll drop our what minus eight okay so this is the uh, equation that can what properly solve for the number okay so this is our answer and let's check the option to see which one is correct Okay, so we have here option one is what's the right one. Okay, that's 2n plus 2 is equal to 3n minus 8. Okay, so option one is the correct answer. Question 11 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 2. That's the part without calculator. Okay, it says, mark the average point of the following data set on your coordinate what grid. Okay, so we have this data set. Okay, remember... When you have data set like this, this is x and this is y, this is x and this is y, this is x, this is y, this is x and this is y, this is x and this is y, okay, and so on, okay? So it says what What do we do? We should what, mark, uh, mark the average point of the following data set. So we are going to calculate the average point of x and also the average point of what y, okay? So that's what we're going to do, okay? so let's find the averages the average of x values and what y values okay so for our x value let's open up the bracket so we have for our x we have three this is our first x here plus the second x is what one then this is a minus and a plus so we have a plus minus three okay which will still give us minus when we open up the brackets, but let's, I'm going to simplify it further. And our next x here is what plus four, our next x here is what plus zero, then comma, uh, comma, then we have divided by how many values do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So it will be divided by five, since we're looking for what the average what point, okay? So it is the summation of all the points divided by the number of the points okay so 
for our y now we have here 2 okay this is our first y 2 our second y is what 5 that's plus 5 our third y is still 5 we have plus 5 our second y is what minus 6 so we have plus bracket minus 6 then our final y is what minus 1 so we have plus bracket minus 1 okay let's manage the space here then we have all brackets okay divided by what 5 okay so let's simplify this here so we have here we're going to have here 3 plus 1 plus times minus okay will give us what minus what 3 plus 4 plus 0 divided by 5 bracket we have 2 plus 5 plus 5 plus times this minus here will give us what minus 6 then plus times this minus here will give us what minus 1 remember it's minus 1 that that's here okay for your own sake when you're solving you don't need to do this the way you know you can just quickly just say it, it will be minus all right okay i'm doing this for for you to understand i'm explaining the question okay that's why i'm doing this but for you during the examination time please don't do this okay just immediately when you see minus 3 you should be just just say plus uh, plus times minus 3 you should just get this immediately that it must be what minus all right okay so let us solve this now so we have a 3 plus 1 will give us 4 and 4 minus 3 will give us what a 1 and 1 plus 4 will give us what 5 so we're left with what 5 over 5 bracket comma here we have 2 plus 5 will give us what 7 and 7 plus 5 will give us 12 12 minus 6 will give us what is 6 and 6 minus 1 will give us what is 5 so we have 5 over 5 and what is 5 over 5 that will give us a 1 comma 5 over 5 here will give us what a 1 so our coordinate point is what x at 1 and what y at what 1 so this is our average point and to mark this on our grid okay to mark this on our grid so where x is what 1 y is what one so this is the point here so we shade this okay to mark this on our coordinate grid this is how you mark it since our coordinate is what one one so x at one y at what one so it's this like this like this okay but don't put this on your sheet please just shade this particular point okay the the people marking it would would know understand what you mean okay i'm just explaining this but for you for your own sake just share this particular point okay let me just um one minute let me erase this so you understand okay so for you just share this point all right so this point means is this so this point means x at one and y at what one all right so this is our answer Question 12 of the GED math practice test, it says, a paper boy can average 30 deliveries every half hour, okay? Half hour is what, 30 minutes, okay? Half an hour is 30 minutes, all right? How long would it take him to deliver papers to a housing track that has 600 houses in it, okay? And the question says in what hours? We should do, our answer should be in what hours, okay? So a paper boy can average 30 deliveries every half hour, okay? So we have to find how long it will take him to deliver what um, housing, uh, to a housing tract that has 600 what houses, okay? So since he can average 30 de deliveries every half hour, okay? So we need to know how many 30 deliveries would he make um in this um in the 600 houses he has to deliver in okay so well, how do we get this we just say 600 divided by what 30 okay so this will cancel out and 3 in 60 will go how many times 20 times so he can do what 20 30 deliveries to this what 600 houses and the question says each 30 deliveries is what he delivers at every half what an hour okay so all we need to do is just say 20 times what 30 minutes all right but the question says we should give our answer what in hours and i hope we remember how to convert minutes to hours okay remember that what how many minutes make one hour okay how many minutes make one hour we have what 16 what minutes make what this is minutes make one hour 
okay so to convert 30 minutes to hour what do we do we divide by what 60 okay so we're going to divide this by what 60 so what do we have here this zero will cancel out this zero and we're left with what um three here will go one three here will go how many times we'll go what two times right and two here one and two in 20 will go how many times 10 times so he's going to divide to 600 houses at what 10 hours okay so this is our answer in what hours so he's going to deliver to 600 houses at what 10 hours all right so this is our answer and our right option here is option four Question 13 of the GED Math Practice Test, Part 2. That's a part without calculator. It says solve for x. So we have this particular algebraic uh, quadratic equation here. And um, solving for x here means we have to word factorize. Okay. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 8. Okay. So in factorizing, I hope you remember how to factorize. First of all, we are going to look for the factors of 8. That we can add or subtract that will give us what a positive word two. So what are the factors of eight? The factors of eight we have what two and four. Okay, two and four. And which other factor we have what eight and one? Okay, well we can't use eight and one here because if we add eight plus one, it will give us nine, which is not close to this. So the best factors to use is what two and four so how can we combine two and four that will give us what plus two so we can combine it this way by saying by saying what minus two plus four which will give us what plus two okay so we're going to use these two factors minus two plus four so here we have x square then we put minus two x plus four x okay then plus it all right so uh, let's um factorize now so we bring out x x bracket what we have x here then we have drop a minus we have to drop this minus i hope you remember factorization okay if you don't i've not done a video on um explaining factorization but in the nearest future i'm going to do one okay all right so here we have minus then we have a two here we drop a two okay and if you multiply this everything in this bracket you're still going to get the same thing then we have to drop our plus here plus then what is common to 4x and 8 4 is common so we bring out a 4 bracket then we drop a x now here this sign is plus so we have a plus here then we drop a 2 okay so if you open up this bracket you're going to still get the same but remember in factorization these signs have to be the same what is we have to have the same thing in these two brackets so it means that this question cannot be what factorized okay so this question this particular quadratic equation cannot be what factorized so we can't we can't factorize it since this sign here is different from this sign here and if you open up this bracket you're still going to get all this which will also give us this okay so this question cannot be what factorized okay so our right option here is option what five it is not what factorable okay so this is our right word answer here question 14 of the ged math practice test part two that's a part without calculator it says what is the largest rod that can fit in this what object okay so we have an object here now the largest rod that can fit in this object will be the size of the um to be equal to the size of the what longest diagonal okay so our longest diagonal of this shape here is this okay so we have to look for the size of this word the longest word diagonal and that would give us the large the size of the word largest road that can fit into this shape okay that's this object okay so in finding this diagonal um let's trace out a triangle here we can trace out a triangle here okay so we have this we have what this okay so this is a right angle or triangle all right this is a right angle triangle so what's this this side we have three here we have five here and we have three here so three plus five plus three what would that give us that six that's um three plus five that's eight and eight plus three that is what eleven and this side here we have five so we have to look for this side which is what the hypotenuse and remember pythagoras um theorem okay so where is what the hypotenuse square is equal to what opposite square 
plus what your adjacent square okay so what is what is our opposite our opposite is what 11 square plus what's our adjacent is what five square we're trying to look for the hypotenuse that's the what longest diagonal okay so we have here 11 square is 1 2 1 plus what 5 square is what 25 is that not it if we add up we are going to have here a 1 2 1 plus 25 what are we going to get? We're going to get this will give us a 6, 2 plus 2, 4, and we have a 1. So we have 146 equal to hypotenuse square. So to get hypotenuse alone, we have what we square root what 146. So we have square root of what 146. So the size of um, the longest diagonal is what the square root of what 146. So this is our answer, and our right option here is option. For question 15 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 2, that's the part without calculator. It says, What is the height difference between Mount Whitney, which is what 14,495 feet above sea level, and Death Valley, which is what 282 feet below sea level? Also, when you see below sea level, it means what a minus, okay? So the dead value is what uh, 280 feet below sea level, which is what minus 282. Whenever you see below sea level, it means what minus 2. It has crossed what 0 to the negative side. Okay, so it says what is the height difference? So it is this minus this. Okay, so it means Mount Whitney height minus the dead, dead valley height. Okay, so we have 4. 495 minus bracket minus 282. Okay, so we have 4495 plus 282. So to add this up, what are we going to get? 5282 plus. Okay, so we have 5 plus 2 here, we have 7. 9 plus 8, we are going to have a 17. So 7 carry what 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. And 5 plus 2 will give us what is 7. And we drop what is 4 here since this is 0. 4 plus 0 is 4. And 1 plus 0 is still what 1. So this is our height what different. So this is our answer. And our right option here is option 5. Okay, this is our right answer. Question 16 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 2. That's the part without calculator. Okay, it says the median test score for a class was what? 85.3%. Which of the following data sets could possibly be the test scores for the class? Okay, so you remember median. Median is what the middle what value is. That not it. I hope you remember median. Median is what the middle value of what a data set. Okay. And from our question here, if you see our options here, our options have also been arranged in ascending what order, okay? To get your median, the, the, the data set must be arranged in ascending order. And uh, the options here, everything is arranged. So uh, all we need to do now is find, look at the, the middle value. Now here, um, the data set is, uh, is even. That is, we have one, two, three, four, five, six is even. So when you have an even um, data set, to get the median, it should be what you add up the two middle values and you divide by what two. Okay, so that's to get the median of an even what data set. If it was an odd um, data set, then let's say for instance, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's only five, okay? Uh, it is easy for us to get our data set here. The data set will just be the middle number, okay? But here we have what an even data set, okay, of numbers, all right? So our uh, median will be the addition of what the two middle number, then divide by what two. Okay, so we have to add these two up and divide by two to i think we have to do it throughout these options for us to um, get what 85.3 okay so any option that gives us 85.3 whenever we add and divide by two will be the right word option all right so let's start from option one option one here we have 85.3 plus 88.2 okay divided by two what would this give us what is 85.3 um this will give us 73.5 okay divided by two if you divide by two 
you are going to get um, 2 is 17 will give us how many times 8 times you will have a remainder of what 1 it will go 8 times that's in 16 we have a remainder of 1 in 13 we'll go how many times um it will, you know 12 so it will go 6 times and we have a remainder of 1 we'll carry this one here and we have um 2 in 15 we'll go how many times we have we'll drop our dots our point here we we'll go seven times and we are going to have a remainder of one and we when you have a remainder of one there's a zero here and um so we have a 10 so two in 10 will give us what five times okay so that's how you divide all right i'm quite fast here all right okay but that's how you divide all right okay so here we have um the next option we have 83.1 plus that's these two middle numbers that's what we're looking at okay we're looking at the two middle numbers okay so we have 83.1 plus 84.1 divided by 2 so what would this give us we have 167.2 divided by 2 let me just divide quickly okay so this divided by 2 is going to give us what 83.6 okay and which is not the answer so let's go to the next option which is of option 3 so we have 84.3 plus 89.1 divided by 2 so if you add up this we are going to have 173.4 divided by 2 if we divide this we are going to have 86.7 Okay, for option 4, that's option 4, we have 83.8 plus 86.8 divided by 2. And what, when we add up this 83.8 plus 86.8, we are going to get 170.6 divided by 2. And when we divide this, what are we going to have? 2 in 17, we will we'll go how many times? 8 times, remainder 1. And uh, that would be 10. 2 in 10 will go how many times? 5 times. And 2 in 6, remember, drop your dot. And 2 in 6 will go how many times? 3 times. So this is our answer. So our right option here is option 4, which gives us 85.3, which is what we're looking for here. Okay, that's the median test score for a class was what? 85.3. All right, so this is the right data set for the median test score of what 85.3 percent so our right option here is option four okay question 17 of the ged math practice test part two that's a part without calculator it says third d wants to cut a 54 yard long metal rod into two unequal pieces one piece must be twice as long as the other what is the length of the smaller what will be what will the length of the smaller rod be okay so we're looking for the length of the smaller rod okay so let's say that the smaller piece okay or the smaller rod let the smaller rod be what x and it says one piece must be twice as long as the other so it means the longer rod okay will be equal to what 2x that's two times the smaller rod all right so let's look for the, the length of the smaller rod is that not it and we know that the sum of the smaller rod and the longer rod is equal to what 54 yard long okay because this is the length of the rod that wants to be cut into two on equal parts where one piece is what twice as long as what the other so x plus 2x will be equal to what 54 so to get x we have what x plus 2x to give us what 3x is equal to what 54 divide by 3 divided by 3 to get our x and what would our x give us 54 divided by 3 will give us what 18 so the length of our smaller uh, rod will be what 18 and our right option here is option 2 okay so this is our answer 18 yard long question 18 of the ged math practice test that's uh, the part two without calculator it says connie was playing music for three hours she listened to the backstreet boys for one hour and listened to nsync for the rest of the time she also has a britney spears album 
how long did she listen to NSYNC? Okay, okay, from this uh, question now, you know, they might confuse us with this particular statement. She also has a Britney Spears album. But the question didn't uh, say that she played, she listened to Witness, uh, Britney Spears album. So, um, this particular statement here is irrelevant, all right? Okay, because the, our question asks is how long did she listen to what NSYNC? So, we are, we are only focused on the music, the albums she listened to okay but for britney spears she did not listen to it all right and what the statement what is statement just uh, referred to is she has the word album okay so don't let this statement confuse you in any way all right we don't need it uh, to, to get our answer so what do we need now connie was playing music for three hours so total hours that she was listening to the music is what three what hours Okay, she listened to Backstreet Boys for one hour. So Backstreet Boys, okay, one hour, all right, and listened to NSYNC for the rest of the time, okay? So the remaining part of the time, she listened to what NSYNC. Now the question asks is, how long did she listen to what NSYNC? So, so it's simply the total amount she listened to both music minus what Backstreet what Boys. That will give us the total amount uh, of time she listened to what NSYNC. So it's simply just three minus what one, which will give us what two hours. So for two hours, she listened to what N sync all right so our right option here is option two which is what two hours question 19 of the ged math practice test that's the part two the part without calculator it says meg's dog rolled around in the grass one day and brought home fleas meg now needs to dust her that's the 3200 square feet house with flea powder to kill the fleas if each if each can, okay, can, all right, can of flea powder cover 600 square feet of space, then at least how many cans will she need to buy to be able to get rid of her flea infestation, okay? So how many can of flea powder does she need to buy? And the question has, has informed us here that a can of flea powder can cover what 600 square feet of, of, of space. And the total, her total house, okay, is what, 3,200 square feet, all right? So to know the total amount of cans she needs to get rid of the flea infestation, we'll just simply divide 3,200 square feet, a square feet divided by what, 600 what, square feet, since a can can what, cover what, 600 what, square feet of space. So let's divide this. So what do we have here? Zero here will cancel out zero. This zero here will cancel out this zero. How many times can six go in 32? Um, it can go in 30. That's five times. Okay, five times remainder what? Remainder two. Okay, can six go in two? No, we have to put a uh, point. It's just like dividing like this. Okay, 32 divided by six. Let's do this together. Okay, six in 32. We'll go how many times? Five times. Five times six will be what? 30. Okay. Then let's subtract this here. We have 2 minus 0 will give us what 2. And 3 minus 3 will definitely give us 0. Can 6 go into no? We have to put the a decimal point here. Then we add a 0 here. Okay, so 6 in 20. How many times will 6 go in 20? It will go what 3 times. Okay, 3 times 6 will give us what 18. All right, so let's subtract this together. Can uh, we subtract 8 from 0? No, we have to borrow a 1. And 10 minus 8 will give us what? A 2. All right. And we are left here with 1. 1 minus 1 will give us what? A 0. Can 6 go in 20? No. In 2? No. We have to add a 0. And 6 in 20 will give us what? A 3. And we shall see if we continue this division, we'll, we'll always get 5.3.3.5. We will always get 5.333333 and the 3 will be what? Endless. Okay, so let's just stop in what two decimal places. Okay, that's 5.33. So she's going to need 5.33 cans. All right. And uh, we can't get a partial can. All right. Is that not it? We can't get a partial can. And the question says, then at least, you can see this, at least how many cans 
if she needs to buy to be able to get rid, rid of her flea infestation okay and she can't was get buy a what partial can she has to buy one full what can so all we need to do is just approximate this five to what six okay add one more can to what six since she can't buy a partial can of um um uh, dot three 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 so we just have to buy a, a one full can and that one full can will cater for everything all right so our answer here will be what six where because the, the question stated at least how many cans will she need to buy to be able to get rid of her flea infestation okay that's the total amount okay that's a three thousand square feet um house that was infected by flea so she needs six cans all right so the answer cannot be 5.3 it has to be or six because the question says at least how many what cans will she need and you can't get what a partial can of 0.33 so all we need to do is add what one full can it's just like for instance you're painting your house and um you 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 know you get to a point and you know that oh uh, i might not i might uh, let me buy an, a, an extra maybe paint can but i'm not going to exhaust it but you still need to buy that full extra one because you can't buy a partial can all right okay so that's why our answer here is six and also our question mentioned at least how many cans will she need to buy so this at least we have to take note of it that's why we have our answer as what six so our right option here is option four Question 20 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 2, that's the part without calculator, it says for a dress, Irene needs 300 feet of tread. If she can buy a spool that has 125 feet in it for $1.50, how much will she have to pay to make her dress? Okay, so how much will she have to pay to make her dress? All right, so the question here says, let's go back again. It says um, she needs 300 feet of tread. Okay, that's the total amount of tread she needs. Okay, equals about 300 feet. Okay, if she can buy a spool that has 125 feet in it for $1.50. Okay, so one spool has what 125 watt feet okay in it for what and you you have to buy that for what one dollar fifty cents okay so how much will she have to pay to make her dress all right so we need to find how many spools okay we can get okay that would um complete what 300 watt feet since one spool is what 125 so when we get the amount of spool that would complete 300 feet then what do we do we multiply the amount of each spool okay to get the total amount she will have to pay for her dress so to get the total amount of spool that we need for the 300 feet of tread we do what we say 300 divided by 125 okay and if we divide this we're going to get what we're going to get uh, 2.4 all right and as just our previous question we can't um we can't um, buy a partial pool we have to buy a full pool so it means that we have to approximate this 2.4 towards 3 okay so she has to buy three pools pools in order to what make her dress complete okay so we, she has to buy three what pools okay so since we know the amount of pools she need all we need to do now to know the amount she she will have to pay to make her dress it's just to say three times what 1.50 what that's one dollar fifty cent and what would this give us to multiply this we're going to have what we're going to have four dollar fifty cents okay so this is the amount she will need to make to pay to make her dress all right and our right option here is option two Question 21 of the GED Math Practice Test, that's the part 2, the part without calculator. It says, Jimmy reaches into his pocket and finds $5.38 in change. There are 27 less nickels than pennies. Which of these equations can solve for the number of pennies 
in Jimmy's pocket. Okay, so we have to look for the equation that can solve for the number of pennies in Jimmy's pocket. Okay, so this is a word problem which we have to interpret. Okay, so the total uh, money in uh, Jimmy's pocket is what is a uh, five dollars thirty eight cent, and it says here that there are twenty seven less nickels than pennies. That means pennies is much. Is that not what it means? So let's say for instance, let's say penny. Okay, the pennies it has is what equal to what x. So it means that nickels will be equal to what x minus 27 because this statement says that there are what 27 less nickels than pennies so meaning pennies is what much so we make pennies equal to x then our nickels will now be what um you are going to we are going to subtract 27 from what our pennies which is what x okay because it says here um there are 27 less nickels than pennies so it means pennies is worth more and to get the value of the amount of nickels you have to what subtract seven from the total pennies and remember what's what's a penny equal to a penny is equal to what one cent is that not it that is what 0 0.01 and a nickel is what equal to what um five cents that is what 0 0.05 okay this is in dollars, this is in dollars, okay? So this is the equivalent of what a penny and also a nickel is what five cents. Is that not it? Okay, so let's keep this now. So which of the questions is which of the equations can solve for the number of pennies in what Jimmy's pocket? So from here, it will be the addition of what this and this. Is that not it? The addition of pennies and what nickels then will equate it to what to five dollar thirty eight cents. But remember, we are looking at two different coins here. We are looking at the nickel and we are looking at the pennies. Okay, so the amount of um, pennies in his pocket will be what zero point that it will be one one cent times times what x okay so we have here the amount of pennies will be what 0 0.01 times x plus then the amount of nickels in his pocket will be what five cents times this that is 0 0.05 then times all bracket x minus what 27 okay which will give us what which will be equal to what that's uh, five dollars what 38 what cent okay so from here we can simplify this equation by saying if you multiply this and this uh, that's one cent times x we're going to have 0 0.01 what x plus this times this okay if we see from our answer here you notice that um, the bracket wasn't open at all okay from each of the uh, options so let's leave let's not open up the bracket all right so we have 0 0.05 bracket what x minus what 27 equal to what 5.38 so this is the equation we are going to use to solve the number of what pennies which is what x okay if uh, for instance the question asks us to find number of uh, uh, pennies not the equation then from this particular equation we can solve for x all right so this is our answer and where is our right option here where is our right option yes our right option is option three okay so this is our answer Question 22 of the GED Math Practice Test, that's the part 2, the part without calculator. It says, find the area of this irregular shape. The corners have had quarter cycles cut out, okay? So the corners have had what quarter cycle cut out. And you can see we've been given the radius of, of the circle, okay? As what, 3 inch. You can see this line, let me make this clearer. This line from here to here, that's the radius of the circle, which is what, 3 inch, okay? The question says, find the area of this irregular shape. Okay, so we have to find this area, this particular irregular shape here, okay? This, the shaded part. This is the part where to find the area, this shaded part which is quite irregular, all right? Okay, and to get the area of this shaded part is definitely the area of the square minus what the area of this particular quarter circles, okay? And when you have quarter circle, if you bring them all together, you're going to have what one full circle. Is that not it? Quarter circle. And we've been told that the radius is what three what inch, okay? That's what this means. So from here to here is also three inch. From year to year three inch, from year to year three. So it means the radius is what three what inch. Okay, so we have a full circle and we have a square. All right. So the area of this irregular shape here is what the area of the square minus the area of what the circle. Okay, which is a combination of what quarter what circles. All right. So 
let's write this down so the area of irregular shape okay let me abbreviate this is equal to what the area of the square minus area of the circle okay and what's the area of the square the area of the square is definitely 10 times 10 okay minus sorry 10 times 10 then minus bracket what's the area of the circle area of circle i hope you remember the formula you'll be giving your formula sheet so the area of the circle is what pi r what square okay where this what's pi r square let's quickly all let me go down here 10 times 10 will give us what 100 minus let's leave our pi and our arrow square is what that's 3 okay that's times 3 square so we have 100 what is 3 square 3 square will be 9 so we have 9 what pi put 9 in front since it's a what number so this is our what answer and what is our right option here our right option is what option 3 so this is our answer question 23 of the GED math practice test that's the part 2 the part without calculator it says in an undergraduate chemistry class there are two or six more freshmen in the course than there are sophomores okay if the total class enrollment was 816 how many sophomores were there okay so and it said uh, the question said only set the problem up okay so that's when it means only set the problem of just a, an equation that would give us um, the, the number of what sophomores okay all right so let's try to interpret this question right okay so let's say that freshmen let's make freshmen equal to what f and let's make uh, sophomores equal to what s okay and the question says that there are two or six more freshmen in the course than there are sophomores okay so it means that what f is equal to what s plus 206 since there are 206 more freshmen in the course than there are sophomores okay so if this statement means what f is equal to s plus what 206 since there are two uh, 206 more freshmen than they than there are what sophomores okay and the question for that says if the total class enrollment was what 8116 that is what this statement means is is what f what plus s is equal to what 816 okay if the total class enrollment that's the freshmen plus what the sophomores are what 216 now the question now asks how many sophomores were they okay so for all we need to do is what substitute the value of f as what s plus 206 into this what equation okay since we are looking for what sophomores and not what the freshmen the, the total amount of what freshmen so we need to cancel out every value of f in this particular equation all right so all we need to do is put in the value of what f equal to what s plus 206 into this what equation it's just like saying this is what equation one and this is equation two okay so putting the value of f into equation two so we have s plus what 206 plus what s is equal to 816 okay so this should be the question that we're going to use to look for the amount of what sophomores that we have in the particular undergraduate chemistry class okay so let's look at our, our answer and see which one is correct okay okay you can see our answer arranged there as in a particular way so we can really arrange so we have a plus here we have a plus here you can see here if you open up this bracket it will still be a plus multiplying this plus which is still a plus and a plus multiplying this plus which will still give us what a plus okay so this is a correct answer but let us rearrange this thing this particular this particular um equation to look uh, look as what this so in rearranging all we need to do is just say s bring this plus you know when you're moving plus around in one part of the equation it will still remain as what plus is that not it okay so we have this eight one what six okay so here we can easily just put bracket so s s plus bracket what s 
plus 206 equals to what? 816. So this equation is still the same as this, all right? And our right option here is option 3, which is what? This. Question 24 of the GED Math Practice Test. That's the part 2, the part without calculator. It says a word processing company created a breakdown chart of the price of each component of their software, okay? So this is the chart, all right? It says... Um, this particular dark shaded area is the quick soft interface. That's a software. This is um, this area is what the programmer e dictionaries. Then this final area here is what sentence what perfect. Okay, all right. And you have first quarter. These are the prices of the first quarter. This is the prices of second quarter of each of um, the software component. This is the prices of the third quarter, and this is the prices of what. The fourth quarter okay now the question says what was the x price what was the price of the software the quarter it was most expensive okay so what was the price of the software the quarter it was most expensive so all we need to do is let us add up the prices of each quarter then know the most expensive what price okay so for the first quarter what do we have we have 84 plus 51 plus 22 what would that give us when you add this up you're going to get 157 okay for second quarter you we have 96 plus 57 then plus 28 when we add this up we're going to have 181 for the third quarter we have 86 plus 50 plus 34 and when we add this up we are going to have what 170 then for our final quarter which is the fourth quarter we have 86 plus 46 plus what 49 when we add this up we're going to have what 163 so the most expensive quarter is what 181 what dollars okay so this is the most expensive what quarter so this is our answer the question says answer this question in the standard grid on your answer sheet so we have a standard grid here so 181 we write this down 181 then we shade one we'll go here down to eight shade eight then go here to one and shade what one all right so this is how we shade on our standard grid okay so this is the answer 181 Question 25 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 2, the part without calculator, okay? We're still on this particular stat graph, okay? So we have, it says, a word processing company created a breakdown chart of the price of each component of their software, okay? So I've analyzed this already, okay? So where this is the quick soft interface, this part is the word programmer, e-dictionaries, this part is what the sentence perfect, and you have the first quarter, the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter prices of each of the word software components, okay? So our question says, on the average, which component costs the least? Okay, which component costs the least? So these are the components, this one and what? This one. We have three components, okay? So which of the components cost the least? And these are the prices of each component, okay, during the, this quarter, the second, uh, the first, second, third, and fourth quarter. All right, so if you look at this, this is quite, these, are, these prices are quite high. You have 84 here, 96, 86, they are high. Here you have 51, 57, 50, 46, they are high. But here you can see the sentence perfect. The values, the values, the amount here are quite what low. So on the average, the component which costs the least is what? The sentence word perfect. Okay, that is option one. Right here, you don't really need to calculate much. If you can just use your eyes and just, you know, you get the answer. But if you still want, want us to calculate, if you add up the sentence uh, perfect, we're going to have um, 22 plus 28 plus 34 plus 49 divided by 4. Okay, because that's what the question says on the what average. And here you're going to have what? 133 divided by 4, which will give us what? 33.25. If you calculate for the rest, you see that this is what the lowest. All right? So our right option here is what? Sentence what? Perfect. Okay? So this 
is our answer. All right. Thank you so much. We've come to the end of this video. Thank you for staying tuned. I appreciate. I know it's a long video and a long one, but I know that after you've watched these particular videos, that's the part A, which is with the allows calculator, then this part B, which is without calculator. I know that you'll be successful. Your forthcoming GED exams. I want you to kill off fears for your GED maths as you approach your exam time. All right. Kill off fears. Okay. Don't don't be afraid of maths all right you are destined to win you are i say it again you are destined to win you are destined to succeed as far as you've made an attempt to sit for your ged maths by even watching this video is an attempt a brave attempt for you to pass you are destined to win and succeed in your forthcoming ged test all right so i wish you success in your exam and don't forget please try to subscribe to this channel give this video a thumbs up and also share this channel to your friends family and loved ones trying to prepare for the ged test okay please share please share and subscribe to this channel okay all right you are destined to win okay see you now our next video. Thank you.